Hi, folks. I'm Brad Bright, and this is the God is the Issue podcast, where we seek to show how God is the issue in every issue. Folks, I, I'm, I, I'm tired of the freedom from religion folks lying to America about religious freedom. So today I'm going to shred the arguments and show you how you can use separation of church and state to argue for religious freedom. Now, a couple weeks ago, Auburn's head coach, uh, Hugh Freeze, helped to baptize about 200 students on campus at Auburn. It was completely voluntary. But immediately, the Freedom From Religion Foundation from way up in Madison, Wisconsin, cried foul. Now, let me uh, quickly unpack this for you, and then I want to play and shred three clips from atheist podcaster Kyle Kalinske. Now, the name Freedom From Religion should tell you everything you need to know about this group. Freedom From is simply code for censorship. Freedom from religion is code for censorship of religion. Now, I suspect if Jesus were walking the earth today, they'd try to probably try to censor his speech too, along with Coach Freezes. Now, the Freedom from Religion Foundation pounds the table about separation of church and state, pretending that separation of church and state is a one-way street rather than the two-way street that the founders intended. Now, what that means is they focus exclusively, solely, on the Establishment Clause of the Constitution. That is, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. But they completely ignore the free exercise and free speech clauses of the Constitution. You see, separation of church and state is a two-way street, which means the government may neither require nor censor religious practice or speech. Did you catch that? Let me say that again. Separation of church and state is a two-way street, which means that the government may neither, may neither require nor censor religious practice or speech. The Freedom From Religion Foundation pretends it is a one-way street. Never believe that. Now, the Freedom From Religion website also states that they work to, quote, promote non-theism, unquote. Now, that's the understatement of the year. In fact, that's the understatement of the decade. A couple of weeks ago, they posted on Twitter, now known as X, quote, International Blasphemy Day is this Saturday. Celebrate all week with us, unquote. Folks, that's not non-theism. That's anti-theism. Actively promoting blasphemy is anti-God. And by the way, blasphemy is religious speech. It's just in a radically bastardized form. Now, I want to play three clips from you from, from podcaster Kyle Kalinske. He's an atheist, and he sides with the Freedom From Religion Foundation. His reactions are typical of what we hear all the time from the anti-God folks. So instead of me telling you what these folks say and how they react, I wanted to show you how they react. And after each clip, I'm going to shred his arguments for you. So let's play clip one. Their purpose is to say, you can have your religion... You can do whatever you want, but there needs to be a separation between church and state. So if we're talking about a public school, a public entity, you cannot entangle your religion in it. You just can't do it. You can't do it. Because as a public institution, you have to represent everybody. You can't promote a particular form of faith. You can't do it because it's exclusionary by its definition. You want to do your little baptism ceremony? Okay. Do it on some private property. At some private thing. By all means, nobody's going to stop you. But having the university officially involved, no. How magnanimous. How magnanimous of Kyle to be inclusive. First, Kyle says that promoting a religious viewpoint is exclusionary by definition. His words, quote, exclusionary by definition. Do you know what is exclusionary by definition? Censorship. Censorship is exclusionary by definition. Now, here's Kyle's logic. We must first censor religious viewpoints in order to include everyone. We must censor religious viewpoints in order to include everyone. In other words, in order to include all viewpoints, we must censor some viewpoints. Oh, wow. If I have to explain to you the problem with that statement, you weren't listening closely at all. If he really wants to be inclusive of everyone, as he says... 
he should demand an end to the censorship of religious speech in public institutions. That's the only way to be inclusive of everyone. My guess, that's a little too inclusive for Kyle. Second, he talks about separation of church and state as though it's a one-way street. I mentioned that earlier. Separation of church and state doesn't just reply to re, apply to religion. It applies to government as well. It's a two-way street. Whenever the state crosses that bright red line of separation to censor religious speech, it tramples on the principle of separation of, of church and state. See, separation of church and state was intended to handcuff government, not the people. Okay, play clip two. The Constitution is a deeply secular document. It's freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. That would imply you're only allowed to pick from religions and you're not allowed to just opt out of religion. That's what that implies. And they make that point as if it's a real point. Wow. First he says that the Constitution is a deeply, did you catch that? Deeply secular document. Dead wrong. Let me explain why. John Adams, our second president, said, quote, our Constitution was made only, only, that means exclusively, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. That doesn't sound deeply secular to me. Does it? that sound secular to you? Now, if you don't like that statement, go argue with John Adams, not me. He's the one that said it. I'm just the messenger. Now, either Kyle doesn't know what John Adams said, or he just doesn't care. Now, the second thing he said is, is that it's freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. That's what he says we believe. And he said that would imply you're only allowed to pick from religions and not allowed to opt out of religion. Are you kidding me? There are so many problems with that statement, but let me bottom line it for you. Did he really forget that the Constitution guarantees freedom of speech for everyone, including atheists? Did, did he forget that? Now, if the Constitution did not include the free speech clause, Kyle might have a legitimate point, but it does, and he knows it. Therefore, his argument is completely absurd and insincere. Okay, play clip three. The issue is mixing it with a public university. You're, you're not allowed to do that under the Constitution for a very good reason. The government, the public institutions, are supposed to represent all of us and be inclusive. You cannot enforce a particular religious viewpoint. This is what the Establishment Clause is about. The government cannot establish a religion. So to have a government, uh, a public university event like this, like, what if there was a, a, a government event where it was like mass conversions to Islam? And they do the, you know, the five prayers, right? What if, what if that's what was going on here? I think they would be outraged by it. I think they would be outraged by it. I think they'd be like, oh my God, Islam is taking over and overreaching and all these things. But when Christians do it, they'd be like, no, this is the default. This is how it's supposed to be. No, it's not. Again, say your prayers, do your baptism, whatever the hell you want to go to church. All that stuff is totally fine. The issue is when you mix it with the government, when you mix it with a public institution, this is not that difficult. No, it's not that difficult. Now, I, I want you to notice two things. First, he only mentions the Establishment Clause. Did you notice that? He only mentions the Establishment Clause. He never references the Free Exercise Clause or the Free Speech Clause. Both of those, both of those forbid censorship. They for, forbid censorship of we the people by the government. That's a major omission that you can drive a semi-truck through. Second, he said, the government is supposed to represent all of us and be inclusive. Let me ask you a question. How can you censor one form of speech and be inclusive of all forms of speech? See, censoring religious speech means, by definition, that you are excluding religious speech, not including it. Now, here's his amazing, amazing logic. He says, he, he clearly implies that in order to be inclusive... You have to be exclusive. That's his logic. In order to be inclusive, you have to be exclusive. That's absolutely insane. The truly frightening thing here is I think he actually believes what he says, and he doesn't see the inherent contradiction in his own logic. 
Welcome to George Orwell's 1984, where war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is, is strength, and exclusivity is inclusivity. Folks, you, you can't make this up. See, I wanted to show you some real-life examples of what millions of secular Americans believe. And then I wanted to evaluate it for you so you are better prepared to, to really respond to this goofy thinking in the future. Now then, if you think Kyle is an anomaly out on the fringes of society, think again. He has over 1 million subscribers on his YouTube channel. And all of those million people, they all have friends that they talk with. Now, you may not like what Kyle said. I get that. But I strongly suggest you quit behaving as though it's not going to affect you. It will. Now, here are the two takeaways I hope you will remember. First, that separation of church and state is a two-way street, not a one-way street, a two-way street, which means the government may neither, neither require nor censor religious practice or speech. The second one is, is that you cannot legitimately claim to be inclusive and exclude religious speech. By definition, that is censorship. Censorship is not inclusive. Now, a reminder to everyone, Jesus said we are to love Kyle, but that doesn't mean we should roll over and go easy on his views. He's dead wrong. As Jesus said, he's blind. People need to know that. However, Kyle's problem is not that he has a flawed view of the Constitution. His problem is he has a broken view of God, and never forget that. Now, let me end this podcast where I started with Coach Freeze. Coach Freeze should be applauded and supported for his authenticity, his love of Jesus, his love of the students, and frankly, it shows. He loves Jesus. You know, Jesus said we should shine our light. That's all Coach Freeze was doing. In a day when most Christians hide their light, folks, this, this guy is an inspiration to all of us. My dad, Bill Bright, once said, the average Christian risks offending God for fear of offending man, but not Coach Freeze. There are a lot of folks out there, in addition to Kyle and the Freedom From Religion Foundation, that are trying to keep you from shining your light. They're trying to intimidate you. We should all seek to be more like Coach Freeze and start shining our light where God has planted us. Not only is the future of our country at stake, but the, inter the eternal souls of our neighbors are at stake, folks. Do you love your neighbors enough to take the risk to shine the light of Jesus in the darkness? So, Coach Freeze, this is for you. You're one of my new heroes. So... From, one, from a CU fan, let me say this. War Eagle, go God. God is the issue in every issue. Now then, folks, as always, help us get the word out by liking, sharing, and subscribing this podcast. Thanks.